Hey, Ken here again. Um, I thought we were just about ready to start making some objects to put on our table here, the mustard and ketchup containers, you know, jukebox plates, whatever. But I think we have a little bit more work to do before we get to that point. First, let's, uh, let's add a little bit more detail to flesh out our room here. So what I'm going to do and uh, go into um, object mode and I'm going to hide by pressing H. Uh, let me start my screencast keys here. Uh, pick, hit H, right click to select, hit H to hide. I'm going to right click the room here and go back into edit mode. Now let's see. I think <clears throat> that this bottom wall here needs to come out a little bit so it's not even with uh, these dividers for our windows. Um, as a matter of fact, the top probably does as well. So what I'm going to do is to go into uh, face select mode and I'm going to select all the faces. Um, I'll use my C, my circles, well, no I won't. Um, I'm just going to right click and select. Uh, hold down shift to select multiples. And I'm going to pick all the faces on the top and bottom uh, of the wall here. <clears throat> okay, I think I think that's everything. Then I'm going to hit E to extrude and Y to lock it to the Y to lock the transform to the Y axis and pull that out just a little bit like so. All right, we go back into object mode and we can see what we have here. That looks that looks a little bit better, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Now, I also want there to be a little bit of a, like a windowsill hanging over the top here. So A to deselect everything. I'm going to go back into vertex select. Uh, Control R, add another loop cut right there. Slide it up to uh, probably probably something something like that. Uh, Go back into face select mode and I'm going to select now all these faces uh, for our windowsill. Alright, and we're going to hit uh, E to extrude, lock it to the Y axis and pull that out just a little bit more. Something like that uh, should look pretty good. Alright. <clears throat> So now we have uh, just a little bit more detail on there. I know it's hard to see. Um, one thing that you can do uh, is turn on ambient occlusion in the viewport, and that will kind of put a shadow everywhere where two faces meet at like a right angle. It will put a little bit of a shadow. That kind of helps uh, visualize sometimes what you have in the viewport. Now it does sometimes make the viewport chug a little bit, especially if you have a really complicated scene. Um, and it does have some artifacts popping up here and there, but I think that looks pretty good and ambient occlusion will help us see it a little bit better. All right, I'm gonna turn that off for the time being. <clears throat> All right, now our windows, of course, are gonna be in these holes here but I want a little bit of uh, molding I think to go around here that our window is going to be you know so it looks like our window is is held in by some molding so let's go back into edit mode and <clears throat> let's see I'm gonna pick all the faces that go around this window frame here now for this uh, <clears throat> see. I'm going to hit I to inset. Bring that in about, about like so. Okay, lock it in place there. Now I'm going to hit uh, E to extrude. I'm going to left click to lock it in place right where it is. And with our uh, pivot center around individual origins, which is indicated by the uh, manipulator handles here. I'm just going to hit uh, scale and scale that in just a bit. Uh, something like, like that. 
So it looks like there's a little bit of, uh, here we'll go back into turn on ambient occlusion. So it looks like there's a little bit of molding around that window. For the time being, I think that looks pretty good. We may add some more detail. Uh, yeah, we may add some more detail to that later on, but for the time being, for blocking everything in, I think that looks pretty good. So let's do the same thing to these other windows. We'll select all the faces around this one. <clears throat> all right. Get so we can see it there. Uh, hit I to inset. Bring it in. Something, something like like that. Uh, yeah, about like that. Um, e to extrude. Left click to lock it in place. S to scale. And we'll just eyeball it. Uh, something about like that. I think looks good. Okay. Let's do the same thing to <clears throat> this other window here. That one. Oop. Shift click. All right. Okay, I am in. Let's see. Let me see if it looks any different. I'm in perspective mode right now. Uh, oh, that doesn't help. <clears throat> let's see. Turn on a. Uh, back face culling so we can see inside our object here. Okay. Looks quite a bit different with uh, perspective mode turned off. Alright. Anyway, let's hit I to inset. I'll bring it in oh, something, something like that. E to extrude, lock it in place, scale it in just a little bit, like so. Okay, I think that that looks pretty good. Okay, let's go back into perspective mode here for a second. Back into object mode. Turn on ambient occlusion just so we can see a little bit better. All right, so we've added uh, a little bit more detail, a little bit more interest to our room, I think. Um, now in object mode, let's go ahead and uh, Alt-H will bring our objects back. Uh, you can see that they're intersecting a little bit. We need to move them over just a little. So we'll select uh, both seats in the table, bring them on over so they're not intersecting our windowsill anymore. Now, the table looks a little wide to me. Let me turn off ambient occlusion. And the seats look like they're a little too far apart. I think if you were sitting here, you'd, you'd be kind of far apart from the other person. So let's narrow, narrow out this table a little bit. So we'll select the table, tab into edit mode, I'm going to hover my mouse over one of the faces, hit L to select everything that's linked to it, and scale in the X direction. Bring that in a little bit like so. I think that looks that looks a little better, I think. Uh, yeah, I think that looks a little better. All right. So we'll pick this seat, move it in a little closer. This one, move it in about the same. and. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I think that looks that looks pretty good. I think I think that looks a little bit a little bit better. Okay, so now our room has a little bit more detail. Uh, we've adjusted our objects a little bit here. Um, we've already cleaned up our our seats. You can see that we've already taken some faces off the bottom and the back. Uh, we've joined them together. Now we have not done that with the table. There's still some faces that we could delete on there. But in the interest of moving along, let's go ahead and create, maybe we'll do a, uh, a ketchup bottle, like one of these ketchup bottles here on, uh, on the table. <clears throat> All right, so let's see. I'm just going to put my cursor somewhere around there on the table. Um, I don't even really think that we need a picture. Uh, I think most people are pretty familiar with a ketchup bottle, or if you're not, just 
make something that's familiar to you. I mean, make the scene look however you want it to look. So let's go ahead and in object mode, uh, we'll shift A, and let's add a cylinder. Okay, now remember what I said before, that over here on the side, uh, you can. there's some adjustments that you can make, but as soon as you do anything out here in a 3D view, all of this goes away. So before we change anything, uh, 32 vertices is more detail, I think, than we're going to need. So let's, let's see if we can get, I think we can get away with 8 pretty well. Uh, radius looks pretty big to me, so let's bring it down to about ketchup bottle size. Um, is that too small maybe? Let's try 1.5 inches and once again if you're not in the United States I apologize for for using the imperial system. If you're using the metric system like the rest of the world does um, just make it so that it looks about right to you. Um, that may still be a little bit big, but we can always adjust it. Um, we're just trying to get it kind of roughed in here. All right, uh, depth. Um, I'm not going to worry about too much now. We can we can adjust that. Now, the cap fill. I think there's two choices. Uh, no, there's a couple of choices. Okay, we can either have nothing, uh, leave the cap open. Let's see if we look at the end of our object here. <clears throat> um, we can set it to nothing and just leave it open. We can set it set it to n-gon, which what that means is uh, even though there are multiple vertices or more than four vertices around the top of this object, uh, each one of these points is a, ver is a vertex and we have eight of them around the object, uh, there is only one face. Uh, which, if you remember Blender from even a year or two ago, you know that that was impossible. Uh, a face could have uh, no more than four vertices um, in the past, which uh, made some challenges sometimes when modeling. And uh, so, so this n-gon here uh, solves that, but you can't really you can't really model too much. We would have to add more geometry to that to be able to model. So the other option is a triangle fan. Um, what that'll do is it puts one vertex right in the center and then it'll a line will go out to each vertex along the edge and it will make uh, a bunch of triangles um, in the top. And I think, I think for this that's what we want to do at least to start out with. So everything looks good there. Um, We'll go ahead and start working on it. You can see right away it looks way too tall. So let's scale in Z something about about like that. Um, I don't know that I'm going to worry about putting the origin at the bottom. We can we can move this around easy easy enough. And if we have to scale it, we'll just we'll just move it around. Okay, so that's the object that we're going to use to start modeling our ketchup bottle. So let's hit M to move it. And we're going to move it. We already have something on this layer. So let's move it to the next layer over. And then in our 3D view, we'll go to that layer and we'll kind of work on it on its own. Uh, so we're not distracted by anything else. Okay. So looks like we have a uh, cylinder here. Tab in the edit mode. I'm going to go back in the vertex mode. Everything looks just fine there, but we need to put the cap on the top. Let's see, how are we going to go about that? Um, okay, let's see. I want to... Uh, First of all, let's look at the top here. I'm going to go control. Okay, it won't let me put a loop around the top here. So, um, okay, right click to cancel the uh, loop cut. Let's see. Um, I'm going to pick that vertex 
and delete it. So now it's I'm going to turn off back face culling too. And uh, so I guess we should have left that just open on the end. <coughs> okay. Let's alt right click to select that uh, that edge loop. I'm going to go back into uh, orthographic view to uh, to model. Sometimes I think it's a little bit easier without the perspective distortion. Okay. So let's see. We'll go back into front view. Well. Now let's look at it from this view. Okay, we want to um, hit E to extrude. We're going to lock that in place. Scale it in a little bit so it starts to pull, uh, starts to close off our top, and then I'm going to raise that up so it kind of makes the top a uh, slight dome. <coughs> All right, let's E to extrude that. I'm going to hit Z because I just want to go straight up like so. Okay. Just like that. So we've made just a little lip there. Okay, let's hit E to extrude again. Lock that right in place and we're just going to scale it out. E to extrude. Z to lock it to the Z axis. I'm going to bring it up maybe uh, something like that. You know, I'll scale it in slightly, about, about like that. All right. Okay, we're going to uh, E to extrude, lock that in place, scale it in again. <clears throat> Let's raise that up like so. Maybe a little bit more. Uh, Let's see, E to extrude again, lock it in place, scale, raise that up a little bit, I'm going to scale it a little bit more, okay. I don't think we're quite ready to start our spout coming up the top, so let's uh, extrude one more time, scale it down to about there, I think that's where we want to start the spout coming out. Raise that up just a hair. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Extrude uh, in the Z direction. Let's bring it up to somewhere around there. Scale this way down. Not all the way to zero. The numpad period to zoom in on that. Uh, Scale it down a little bit more. Okay. Now uh, extrude, lock it in place, scale it down a little bit more. Extrude it one more time, lock it in place. And uh, we're going to grab that in Z and pull it straight down. <clears throat> okay. All right. Let's see what our basic shape looks like. Might be a little too pointy at the top. Maybe. Uh, let's go in the wireframe mode. B to border select or box select um, to get all those. And let's scale, scale them up a little bit. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, that looks that looks a little bit better, I think. Uh, let's set our shading to smooth. Okay. Looks not too bad. Um, I want to give this ketchup bottle a little bit of a curve, make it look like it's been squeezed a little bit on the side. So let's uh, put an edge loop right about like so. Lock it there uh, and S to scale. And just scale it in. I don't know, so, something like that. I think looks pretty good. <clears throat> okay. How's that look for a ketchup bottle? Not too bad, I don't think. Um, let's go ahead while I'm thinking about it. Instead of cylinder, let's name this... Whoop, ketchup bottle. All right. Let's give it a, uh, a subsurf modifier. 
Now our thing's too rounded off. Let's see. We'll bump it up there. <coughs> Now we can, uh, yeah, I think we will. Um, we can try. Let me see. We can try a uh, edge split modifier. I don't know if that's going to help us out or not. Um, no, I don't think so. No. Okay. Now the edge split modifiers are something different. Um, all right. So <clears throat> let's go in and sharpen up the edges that we want to be a little bit sharper. So we'll put, put a loop cut there. Uh, bring it up like so. We might leave that top one rounded off, but our cap here, I want to be sharp, a little bit sharper. So we'll put an edge loop right across there and slide it out towards the edge. Put another one here, bring it down pretty close. Another edge loop there, uh, bring it up. One there, bring it out. One here, uh, maybe about like that. Let's see how our top is looking. This is going to be so small that I don't think anyone will notice, and I think they tend to be a little, little round it off anyway, so I think that looks pretty good. Um, okay, let's see, the bottom we definitely need to fix, so edge loop there, bring it down. <clears throat> Once again, I can't do an edge loop around here. Uh, let's see, do we, whoops, do we need to? Um, I don't know, I kind of think I'd like to, to see what it looks like anyway. All right, couple things we can do. Um, let's go into edge select mode. I'm going to select that edge, press X, and dissolve edge. Let's see what that does. Okay, good. X, dissolve edge. Uh, we'll dissolve that one, and dissolve that one. Now what that has done, uh, we've turned our triangles now into quads at the bottom of our object here. So now each face has now four vertices instead of three. I don't know that that's going to let us make a loop around there, but um, as a general rule when you're modeling, you want each face to have four vertices. Uh, triangles are okay. I mean, I've seen a lot of great meshes that use triangles, um, but they they can tend to make, uh, when you're rendering out, they'll, it'll look like a, a little pinch point. You'll see a little artifact where the triangles come together. And definitely, if you're animating something and it's going to be moving, triangles can cause some, some unwanted, uh, unwanted artifacts uh, when you're bending around your, your characters or whatever you're trying to animate. So as a good general rule, try to make your faces have uh, four vertices. Okay. Let's just see. I'd be willing to bet it's not going. Yeah, it's not going to go around that way. So let's let's try this. We'll hit K for the knife tool. Um, click there. Click there. 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 And there. And hit enter. Let's see what we got. Okay. Well, we've just made more triangles, which I said was a bad thing. But um, we also have these faces. One, two, three, four, five. So what we can do is uh, we can um, put an edge between here and here, and that'll make that into a quad and these into two quads. So Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, you can do that by, uh, let's see. Let's see, we'll pick that vertex. Oops. Okay, wait a minute. I want to select uh, this edge. Hit W, subdivide. That'll put a, a vertex right in the middle. Then we'll select that one, that one, that one, and 
on that one. And since these are so close together over here, I just want to look at them and make sure I have the right ones. Hit F to make face. Okay. You can see we have an issue there, but at least we have uh, two quads now. Uh, this one, this one, that one, and that one. F to make a face. Pull that out just to kind of round off the bottom. Um, this seems like a lot of work for, for just doing that. Let me see here. It seems like a lot of work to do that, so I'm not going to do that. Um, Let's go back into uh, vertex mode. Uh, no one's going to see the bottom here anyway. Uh, I do want to uh, select this bottom edge loop here, the whole loop. And instead of um, putting another loop cut around here and sliding it out to the edge, let's use the, uh, the mean crease of the subsurf modifier here and see if we can't sharpen that up. Okay. Uh, Alright. Yeah, I think that looks good. Okay. That looks pretty good. Alright. So here we have our basic catch-up bottle and I really think that's about all the detail that we're going to need on that because it's going to be a small part of the scene. Um, we're not really going to see it too much. If we want to, we can go ahead and give it a uh, a placeholder material. Uh, we'll just hit new to create a new material. We'll make this just a little darker red maybe. Or I'll tell you what, we can use our eyedropper and we can actually grab the color right out of the right out of the picture here. There we go. It's a little more on the oranges orangish side, I guess. Alright. Uh, let's go ahead and shift select our first layer again. Um, Go back into uh, <laughs> perspective view. Um, I think our table here is on layer. Yeah, our table is on that layer. Um, all right, looks pretty good to me. Um, well, I'm back in uh, orthographic view. Uh, which means we have to turn back face culling on so we can see through the roof. I uh, just want to grab this. Uh, remember, when you grab an orthographic view, and you're looking, um, you're looking from one of the you know uh, direct on views. Uh, for instance, right now we're in top orthographic view. So when we hit G to grab, we're only going to move in X and Y. It won't be moving in Z at all. So I'm just going to move it over here to the end of the table, uh, about where it would be. It looks a little big to me, but um, I don't know. Here's our character. What do you think? Does that look a little bit big? I think it does, but well, we can adjust the scale um, on down the road once we get uh, maybe once we get our characters in the scene, we can you know tell about how big that should be. But at any rate, I think I'm rambling once again. But what we've done in this video is we've made some minor adjustments to the shape of our table and move the move these a little bit we've added the ketchup bottle and we have uh, made a little bit more detail in our uh, in our room so that it looks uh, a little bit more uh, more like you would expect the room to look with all the little details uh, the windowsill the uh, trim around the windows um, we made sure that these are now not even with the walls, so it, it just looks uh, a little bit more realistic. All right, I think I've rambled on enough in this video. When we come back the next time, we'll basically duplicate this object, turn it into a mustard bottle. Maybe we'll make um, a drink glass or something to put on the table and talk about some objects that we can put outside. I was actually thinking that I might want to 
add a little bit of motion to this scene, maybe like a, a motion comic. So I was thinking about things that we could have moving here in the background. Um, maybe a tree branch coming down, blowing in the breeze. I don't know. But we'll, we'll think about it um, as we go along. Anyway, um, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.